Now, you share everything with your significant other, your fears, your goals, and in some cases, a bank account. But what about your passwords for things like Facebook, email, or even your smartphone? Does your partner know every little detail about your life? There is always that point in a relationship where couples wonder how much information they should share with their mate. But does everything have to be out in the open, or are some things best kept private? To sort of help us work through this confusion tonight, I'm joined by Dennis Asimwe and Dr. Shilan Dianabanji to talk about the right to privacy in relationships. Good evening and thank you for joining us. <laughs> thank you. Uh, most relationship counselors agree that every relationship should be based on transparency and honesty. Mm -hmm. So if there are intimate details involving my past relationship, like an intimate physical relation or a serious affair, is it advisable for me to tell my partner about it. Dennis, go first. Um, uh, it depends on uh, the context in which you need to share that information. If it's uh, going to have any impact on the current relationship that you're having, then yeah, uh, disclosure is important at that particular point. But otherwise, relationships that you've had in the past should just be blocked off. I mean, that, that era is over. There's a reason why that has ended. There is no reason to bring it up in any, any you know, in any fashion or something. Dr. Sheila, you take? I, I don't think you need to bring the, the skeletons from the cupboards which you had in the past, especially if you know they are going to hurt your relationships. However, if your partner asks about <coughs> it, maybe somebody has talked about it or they have got some information, then it's best that you tell them the truth that it was your, you had that relationship. Otherwise, it is not necessary for you to be the one to start now. But is it, is it safe for everything. me to wait for my partner to ask? Because normally by the time they actually ask, they're already under currents. So isn't it safer for me to just bring it up? I think the word go? you should not give them reasons to have the undercurrents. For example, I don't know why do we keep their phone and their other details and their messages in your, in your, in your phone. And, and also, why should you keep them? And also, why are you going through the process of uh, you know, bringing up this entire information? Then it brings up the question, how much information are you going to give? How yes. far back are you going to go? Are you going to go back to, to the age when you were about like <laughs> nine, nine years old, your first yes. relationship? <laughs> Whatever you did, how much detail are you going to impart? It's uh, kind of an area you want to just steer away from unless it's really, really necessary mm. to have that kind of conversation. So how do you draw the line where privacy is concerned with a relationship? Um, relationships have a different context today, even from like five years ago, especially because of social media. I mean, that's like a whole, totally whole new ball game. I think that if you're going to have a serious relationship and if you're going to actually claim to actually have a serious relationship, which most people really don't do anymore, they don't claim or they don't anymore. have serious relationships? They don't really have serious uh, relationships anymore. Okay. Some and because what, 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 what social media has is done is that it's opened up a definition of how you can interact with people completely from a completely different context. So if you're going to probably try and have a relationship like that, you, you need to have some boundaries that you set up or cut off. You need to limit your social media interaction drastically. Ouch. Flatless uh, <laughs> or completely cut it off. I mean, there are certain steps that you need to actually take today that you wouldn't even ha consider five years ago. So even before those privacy issues actually come up, you need to first create those boundaries within the way that you're going to be interacting on a daily basis, especially within the interactions around you. Then you won't find yourself asking yourself those, those you know, awkward questions. You won't be texting somebody at 11 p.m. and then trying to explain to somebody that you're in the middle of a social media debate yet you're actually you know, flirting. Okay, and that's in the context of relationships in general. Dr. Yeah. Sheila, what about marriage? I think transparency and honesty builds trust. And ideally, in a marriage, you're supposed to be best friends. So if it, if it is that kind of marriage where you are best friends, then you share everything. But I, I, I understand that not all marriages, not all people are married are best friends. Yeah. So depending on whether it is going to hurt your marriage or whether it is going to make it better, some information may be kept. But then there is certain key information, which is key for keeping the relationship, which you shouldn't hide. Like Things like about you have a problem with the job, 
about mm -hmm. a job, about money, about illnesses. Maybe you have a certain serious illness and then you keep it from your, your partner. You know, those kind of, inf that kind of information, which is key for the relationship, should be shared. But of course, it does not mean you share each and every little detail, whatever you think about, whatever you dream about. <laughs> but you shouldn't hide information, which, if discovered, will actually hurt the marriage. So you may hide the date, for example. And if you hide these dates, one day, these dates they'll, will be known. Have a way of and when they are known, they'll actually kill whatever little trust you had. So you have to be brave sometimes and share those things, which are tough and painful, but it is better to be from you to the partner, not for the partner to catch it somewhere, because usually information cannot be hidden forever. Now, while women generally love to share, most women, sorry, mm -hmm. not most, many women generally <laughs> love, <laughs> yeah, I have to ask you that very carefully, yeah. many women generally love to share even the tiniest bit of their lives, what they've done, who they have met, what they have done during the day, and stuff like that. And sometimes men have a way of keeping away even the most significant issues, mm. you know. They, they keep them under wraps until they're actually caught out. How do you make a clear distinction between privacy and secrecy? I think, uh, th you see, the problem with that approach is that the way the modern relationship is approached today is approached with this whole idea of unity. Uh, to become one, you complete me, that whole ridiculous jargon. <laughs> but the problem is <laughs> that you're actually two very separate individuals. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you need to understand is that a person has to be able to retain their individuality. So if you approach a relationship, I mean, that's the reason why you found them interesting in the first place, that they were different from you. They was a separate person. So if you're able to create that s uh, situation within your relationship where you, you're like, okay, this person has their own life, and uh, we have a certain place where we have a common ground and we meet here and interact and whatever. But we also, to a certain extent, we're not completely different. It's not like we're two strangers anymore. But we actually have different lives that we live on our own. We grow on our own. We develop on our own. We have different uh, things that get to us in different ways separately. I think if people keep tr try to remember that even within a relationship, you're individuals. It's much healthier than going with a whole happy you complete me. I don't How think I, don't think I because agree whole, with you. The, the whole you complete me approach I, I, doesn't really work. I don't agree. Really I don't agree. If a marriage is going to survive, as you live in the marriage, you get closer and closer until actually you are real one. That you find that there is no need for you to keep any secret. And that individuality, slowly, slowly by slowly, reduces so much that even you know what your partner is thinking. When you're in two different places, you know that if my partner saw this, this is what they'd think. If they saw this, if they had to make a decision, this is the decision they make. And that's what will make a marriage survive. I want to assure you, if you remain individuals, the tendency is that you, you grow will always apart. Be but, but you see, and I, I, you I, remain individuals as, and as, as human beings. As, as and when you know some other things like you know, the hot love and you know, what, what, which keep people <laughs> together, <laughs> now when away. You are not friends anymore. You are not so close, and <laughs> the marriage becomes just. But boring. as as, as as human beings, instinctively, you're inclined to view yourself <laughs> as an individual. It's, it's an automatic reflex. So actually, you could suggest that an, an a relationship is trying to get you to do something that you instinctively not programmed to do. So you're trying to make people. Uh, go towards an inclination that they're actually not interested in. If you love somebody, compromise, are they if you love somebody, they're about what? Compromise. If you love my, somebody. My, my view of relationships is a little bit different from yeah. the whole compromise, the whole compromise perspective. If you love somebody, you should be willing to be vulnerable to that person. To be what? Vulnerable <laughs> to that person. <laughs> to let them know the dark side of you, the good side of you, and to be able to live with it. And you also know your spouse, and you know they should also be vulnerable. I want to show that if you don't do that, the marriages don't survive. Okay. Don't <laughs> Our time is first spent, but maybe just one final question. What are some of the things to keep in mind when considering the level of privacy in a relationship? I think you must make sure, you must know what is going to hurt the marriage, mm -hmm. what is going to build the marriage, what is going to kill suspicion. You should not do anything which is going to create suspicion in the eyes of your partner. Because the minute you do, you kill trust. Then they want to start snooping, and they have a right to snoop, by the way, because they have a right you to give snoop. yourself to them. 
And when they snoop, and they may get the wrong information, and it will kill the marriage. So don't create room for the spouse to start wanting to, to do some small investigations. Okay. Give them adequate information. Okay. So that they, you know, they don't have to, to even go out to check your phone and so on. Because they know anyway, you have told them. Okay, our, our, time, our time is entirely up. Mm. Very interesting discussion. We'll, I'll definitely pick up this discussion, <laughs> this discussion later and offset. Thank you so much for joining us, Dennis. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining us, Dr. Sheila. Yes, and we'll take a short break and return with NTV Weekend Sport.